Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Network and Cisco Packet Tracer Tutorials for Beginner. In previous tutorial, you learned how the RIP works as a distance vector routing protocol. And in today's tutorial, we explore more on a RIP board and see what are the problems we may encounter while using the RIP in our network. So let's begin by adding several routers in our topology. If you remember, this is a belong to previous topology. You just go to the add to 28, 11 router. Okay, and go to the router zero, CLI. Let's save the configuration by write mem. Okay, or WR or copy is running to the startup config because we need to add the module on this router. I want to connect them via the fast Ethernet interface. So let's save the configuration, go to the router zero, turn off the router and add one NM1FETX module. We just need the fast Ethernet module to turn it on. Do the same thing on the router one, go to the physical tab, turn off the router. One FETX should be okay. And that's it. So now let's do some cabling works. Choose the crossover cable, fast Ethernet, 1 slash 0, connect to the 0 slash 1. Okay, fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 to fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, and connect fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 to 1 slash 0. Okay, let's make it clean. We have a van link 1, 172.16.0.0 slash 13, and let's do some documentation for a van 2. We use the second subnet of a slash 13, which is 172.16.0.4. And for event 3, we using dot 8 part of subnet. And for event 4, using dot 12. Here we go. This is done. Let's make it clean. Yes. Okay. This is event 3. This is event 2. And let's start some configuration. Go to the router 0. Yeah. enable the router, go to global config mode, do show IP route. I just want to show you that we have a RIP in previous tutorial. We learned about LAN 30 and LAN 40, which belong to other side of the van. And do show IP interface brief. Okay, interface FA 1 slash 0, no shot. Let's set the IP address 172.16. 0 0.5 slash 30 255.255.255.252. Okay, so now show IP interface brief. Okay, the link physical is come up. And let's do the RIP config also. Router RIP. Okay, we have a network 172.16.0.4. Let's be more specific. But as you can see here, and we have this configuration, actually, the RIP is only on recent network 172.16.0.0. Since we're using the no auto summary, the RIP doesn't apply any auto summary on the routing. But I want to be more specific. In a future video, you see how the OSPF and the IGRP can use the wildcard and subnet mask to make the life as a network admin much more easier and accurate. Let's go to router 2. Okay, we don't want to do the configuration via wizard. Enable the router, global config, do show IP interface brief. Okay, conf t. We have interface FA0 slash 1 connected to the router 0. IP address 172.16.0.6 slash 30 255 255 255 252. No shot. Let's bring the connection on FA0 slash 0. No shot this time. IP address 172.16.0 slash dot 9 slash 30 dot 255.255.252. So let's take a look at the config. It's not a big deal. Just FA0 slash 1. We assign the IP address as well as on a FA0 slash 0, we assign the IP address. That's it. So now let's check what we have here. Exit, do show IP interface brief. 
Okay, both links are physically up. The link between the new routers is not up yet because the other side is still down. And let's do show IP route to see what we have. We have only connected network. We config the router RIP on this network. Okay, version two, no auto summary. And the network will be 172.16.4 and network 172.16.0.8. Take a closer look at the config here. Router RIP version. No auto summary and advertised network, both dot four and dot eight. So now let's take a look at the show IP route and our router is very fast. Learn about the LAN 10, LAN 20, LAN 30 and LAN 40. All of them via neighbor net router 172.16.0.5. And as you can see, we have administrative distance of 120, which belongs to the RIP. Administrative distance generally shows that how our route is accurate and this is second part is a hop count on a router read Which means that if I want to reach to 192.168.10.0 slash 24 network I have to go through the one hop via 172.16.5.0.5 yeah, if you want to take a look, closer look on this, as you can see here in our network, whoa, okay, this is much better. If I want to reach to the LAN 10 and LAN 20, I have to choose through this way. Also, if I want to reach to LAN 3 and LAN 4, which are 192.168.30 and 40, I have to go through this, and this time I have a two hop to reach there. This is a configuration on the router 2. Let's go on the router 3. Okay, no wizard. Enable. Go to global config. Okay, do show IP interface brief. It's a good idea. You see the interface. Interface FA0 slash 0. No shot. Okay, IP address 172.16.0.10.255.255.0.5. Uh, 255.252 in the slash 30 in a network of 172.16.0.8 slash 13 we have dot 9 which belong to this router and 10 which belong to the router 3 okay now shot again interface fa 0 slash 1 no shot ip address 172.16.0.13 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
version 2 which was still from previous and we advertise 172.16.0.12 show run and this is a final configuration for RIP on this router we advertise all the connected router as you can see even if I put more specific route in one router RIP 172.16.0.12 RIP is automatically shows like that. But since we're using no auto summary, we no need to worry. Okay, now let's go back to the router 2 and again use the show IP RIP. And this time you can see some differences from the previous. As you can see here, now I have two paths to reach to the LAN 30 and LAN 40 from this router perspective. One, again, at mercy distance 120, but one of them is true. 172.16.0.5 and the other one is .10 as well as here in other words if I want to reach to this network I can one pass from here or I can go through here and reach to that side so this is a good thing about dynamic routing protocol they automatically learn uh, the router in between so now let's uh, show you what where the problem is actually as you can see here we have a van link very uh, low speed or low bandwidth links between the router 0 and router 1 let's go to router 0 okay exit from here show interface serial 0 3.0 second yes here we go as you can see i only have the bandwidth of 1.5 megabit per second which is very low but the van link is okay but in the other hand i have a fast ethernet link which is 100 megabit per second in the top link here let me show you that speed for that link okay show interface fa01 slash zero and as you can see here this time we have 100 megabit per second speed compared to the 1.5 megabit so the RIP works based on a hop count. Lower hop count means better route, but it doesn't mean the lower hop counts, you have a better quality or better link between your router. So other routing protocol like OSPF and EIGRP also can consider other criteria like a quality of the link to calculate the best path to the destination. But the RIP only works based on the hop count. And this is a very big drawback and problem with the RIP. Anyway, uh, it works in a small network. You still can use it, but it is not very favorite routing protocol. Let's do some exercise on a PC0. Go to the desktop and uh, let's ping the other side, 192.168.30.10, which is PC on the other side. We expected to have a ping in the previous video we did it so very good we can ping it and let's trace route 192.168.30.10 and see tracer 192.168.30.10 and see which path we choose as you can see here we use the tracer and we go to the default gateway .250 go to the next side of the van and finally reach to the pc on the other side if I go to the router 0, let me show you this side by side if possible. And the router 0, okay, this is good. So we have here, show IP route. So I know how to go to the other side from this route perspective. And go to the global config mode. And interface S03 slash 0. And... Okay, let's do the ping we can ping successfully no issue again trace it we can trace it and i'm going to shut down this link the van link between these two so we shut it down and we want to see what's happening when we ping from this pc to this pc here let's bring back the config okay here we go we try to ping okay ping is still up and we can reach to the other side but let's take a look at the trace route and this time as you can see 
the trace route is changed still we go to the gateway default gateway but this time the path is totally changed and we add more hop so the rip as a dynamic routing protocol can fix the issue for us and here i bring back the new shot on interface the link is up one of the issue with the rip is about the timer of the rip actually because it depends on where which part of the timer you are is make time for recalculate the thing but in version 2 they fix this issue by adding the trigger update and we bring back the link and our trace route also back to the shortest path so which is which is one hop away from the LAN 10 to LAN 30 from the router 0 perspective uh, let's check on the router 3 also it's interesting and as you can see here we just have a one path to the other side of the links and again we're using the show IP route and here is a difference is clearly can see 192.168.10 we have a two pass both of them two hope away but from different router dot nine and dot fourteen dot twenty also from nine and fourteen and also I can reach to my uh, LAN 30 and LAN 40 via dot uh, fourteen pass which is from the this side very accurate way to reach there uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this video in a future video we start the OSPF in the same topology and see how we can stay in our uh, rip to the OSPF and how the OSPF can choose the pass with a higher quality over the pass with a lower quality or bandwidth thank you very much please share our video subscribe and see you soon